Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing how to wire a stepper motor you don't have a wiring diagram for. Um, this comes up all the time, and 98% of the time, it's a system that's being retrofitted that the potential client doesn't want to change his motors because why spend more than you have to when you just need a controller? Makes total sense. However, when I ask them if they have the wiring diagram, that's where they're typically lost. Um, this happens also if you're importing a system overseas and it comes bundled with motors or you buy a system at auction and you still have no idea how to wire your motors. Now, this method is really best suited for motors that are in bipolar format, mainly because it's faster. Um, you can use it with any motor, but again, this method that I'm outlining here, you'll see how quick it is with a bipolar stepper. Now, bipolar simply means it's a four lead motor. Unipolar is a six lead motor. You may have one of those. Um, six lead motors, you'll have the center taps, and then you have eight lead, which is really ridiculous. Um, keep in mind, eight lead, you're typically gonna have two leads that have to go together in order to make uh, one of the leads. So you're actually taking the eight leads and turning them into four leads because you're binding two together in order to convert it into a bipolar motor. Uh, most drives on the market don't support an eight lead motor. It'll be a bipolar format hookup. So keep that in mind. Um, overall, the process works the same. Before we get started in this, the first thing to do if you haven't done so already, let's say you're looking at a system, hopefully, and you found this video prior to buying it, I would say get two points of contact, whether you're dealing with the vendor directly, a proprietary vendor, I would always get two points of contact. And the main reason I say that is, if you get some resistance from one point of contact and information you need for any parts for the system, you have another point of contact that may be more cooperative. Um, I say this all the time, I get uh, potential clients that'll say, you know, I never thought of that. And believe me, in, in dealing in this industry, as long as I have, always diversify your numbers. You know, the more people you can deal with on the opposite end, you never know. There's always one jerk that works at a company. And typically, it's that guy that you get that you ask any information about. And either they don't know or they won't provide it because they're trying to protect their company's best interests. Um, we all know that it's a sham. And really, it's just a ploy to make you pay more than you have to, uh, again, because motors are readily available. So let's say you did not have luck. And again, that method, once again, works really well overseas as well. If you import a system overseas, always ask for two points of contact. They may ask you why. You say, well, if you're sick, I just want to make sure I have, you know, um, someone I can actually go to if I have an issue so I don't have to worry about downtime. And typically, they'll, they'll give you another point of contact. And like I said, you may get more... Uh, more uh, honey from that bee if you do require it. So anyways, what we wanna do here, real simple, we've got a DB9 male connector, and this is a prosodilus. And then over here we have another prosodilus, but this is a female connector. Now you guys may not have these two connectors available. I'm doing this for, for um, demonstration purposes. It's easier than me holding everything. Um, you can connect an LED, this is just a low power LED. You can connect it to um, any two of these leads using heat shrink, using electrical tape, just temporarily, you're just holding it there. And when we rotate this shaft, if we find a matching set of polarities that go to a coil of the motor, this LED will light because when you spin a stepper shaft on the opposite end, it actually generates power. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna spin it. You'll see the LED, the faster I spin it, the LED lights up brighter and backwards does the same thing. So what we know now is I just found a matching set for a coil, okay? Now we don't know if this is A or B polarity, but we do know that it is an A plus, an A minus, or a B plus, B minus. Um, worst case scenario, if we connected this to a drive now, um, as long as we select either a B plus, B minus, or A plus, A minus, and connect it to one congruently, meaning that we don't mix it. So if I select B, for instance, I want to connect these two, I would just pick a wire or pick a lead and say, okay, I'm going to make red B plus, and then I'll make white B minus. You're fine. If I reverse that and say I'll make uh, red B minus and white B plus, that's fine. But I cannot mix a lead from here from B to an A. And we know that eight and nine, being this is a bipolar motor, we know eight and nine is definitely gonna be an A polarity. If we did that, we connected it to a drive, you would blow a drive. So again, if you have to rewatch this video, cause again, there's gonna be a lot of terms used and I go through this pretty quickly cause I deal with it every day. So if you have to slow it down, I totally get that. And that's why I say it's having two people doing this really, really pays. 
uh, as you're learning the process. Once you get it dialed in, you'll do it second nature. You won't even think about it. So right now, being we have a bipolar motor, and I would just simply wire this. Uh, once again, I pick a polarity that I want to wire, whether it be A or B, and allocate these two wires to that polarity. That would be for one coil. And we know that 8 and 9 on the opposite end, once again, would be for if I select this to be B, once again, this would be A. And regardless of which end of the A we hook up, because we still don't know for sure if it is, regardless of what we hook up in the worst case scenario, the only thing that would happen is your motor would run in reverse. Now, that being said, to correct that is very simple. You'd go in Mach 3 and just simply reverse the motor in the software. You don't have to rewire everything, and you're good to go. Um, if you don't have access to these connectors, a real simple way of doing the same process just take another motor here same motor is just take the leads I recommend heat shrink I like working with heat shrink call me crazy I work with it every day but that's what I enjoy um, coming over here you can see I did not find a matching set the motor is very easy to turn and that's not a matching set as soon as I find a matching set the motor will give me resistance I'll actually be able to feel the steps there we go we have a matching set right now so blue and yellow is a matching set okay you would have your assistant tell you okay blue and yellow you tested it and I felt resistance so okay what colors are they you'd ask your assistant your assistant would say blue and yellow you write it down you're golden you're a lot less uh, prone to make a mistake that way than doing this by yourself if you've never done it the first time um, and being with dealing with a bipolar motor if you know you find one set you know that the other two leads are obviously the other set. You would just allocate this once again, either A polarity or B polarity, and you're good. So this would be all of A, and this would be all of B, regardless of how we hook them up, and you're set to go. Okay, very, very easy to do. Once again, worst case scenario, the only thing you'd actually encompass is possibly the motor running in the reverse direction than you apparently wanted. So again, you could either work up a little tool like this. This little tool is actually cool to have in the shop because again, depending upon how many systems, I deal with a lot of guys that deal with electronics and having this set up is just a real quick way rundown uh, basically of how to test this and get yourself squared away so that of course you never have to worry about dealing with uh, the possibility of hooking a motor up wrong and blowing a drive. So again guys, I hope this video has been super helpful. Um, again, I know I get questions on this all the time, so this video will be, I, I think, heavily used and used with good faith. So um, if you do have any questions, please contact me directly at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also contact me directly at eDealersDirect. That's my eBay store. Those links will be in the description. Once again, to all my subscribers, I love you guys. I'm going to keep the videos flowing as much as possible. Um, these how-to videos, I feel, are really beneficial in keeping you guys up to date as far is all this information and you'll always have it uh, to cross-reference whether you're building or servicing your system so again I just want to uh, keep that support flowing um, thank you all take care